welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Challenge of the Yukon. Original air date is October 30th, 1950, and the title is Undercover. Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. <laughs> it's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, taking a trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police. In his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And then, on the ocean. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike and the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> The will begin in just a moment. The principle of the best education possible for our children has been one of the basic cornerstones of our nation. But the ever-increasing enrollment in elementary schools has resulted in poor educational conditions in many communities across the country. Most important, there is an insufficiency of elementary school teachers. Teaching is an occupation that is more attractive now than ever before, since there is a growing public interest in education and measures are being taken to improve schools. Such a career offers exceptional opportunities for intelligent, imaginative young men and women who are now in college. The lack of teachers is only one side of this problem. Some places require additional school buildings. Others need more equipment, textbooks, and personnel. If these problems are to be met and solved, the cooperation of every citizen is a must. See what you can do. Better schools build better communities. This message is brought to you as a public service. Sergeant Preston sat at a corner table in the notorious 303 Cafe in Skagway. He was not in uniform. In fact, his rough trail clothes and a three days' growth of beard made him practically unrecognizable. The skipper of the Arctic Queen was uncertain for a moment, and there was still doubt on his face when he walked up to the table. You are Sergeant Preston, aren't you? That's the love, Captain. Sit down. I'm sorry. It's all right, no one heard you. Where is Skagway, no? My name's Forty Mile Bill. Oh, I get it. The force is pretending you didn't do it. Exactly. What's the case? I've been watching the man for the past week. Standing up at the fire and he's uh, looking at us now. It was working during a few minutes ago. Fast speeches, black eyes, black eyes. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's... He wanted to book passage back to the state. Told him I was sailing for St. Michael's in Alaska. Then he wanted to go there. Very interesting. What you tell him? But I tell everybody. The Irish Queen carries no passage. That's fine. The passage money doesn't pay for a damage, baby, Sergeant. Please don't call me a passage, not here. I'm sorry. I'd better be on my way. Oh, there's no need. I don't want to mess things up, but I would like to talk. Why don't you come out to the ship tomorrow morning? We don't sail tomorrow night. That's fair. That's fine. See you then, then. Bill. Go on, Captain. As soon as the captain left, Roy Chase forced his way through the crowd to the sergeant's table and sat down. They call you 40 mile bill, don't they? Some people do. I'm right, Chase. Got it. You're a friend of Captain Owen, huh? Hello, friend. I'd like to book passage on it, sir. He's sailing for St. Michael. I know. So what do you want to go there? Well, uh, the main thing is I want to get out of here. There's no other ship sailing this least two weeks. I was there for Terry past I know, that's what he said. But I thought a friend of his might change his mind. Oh, well, I don't think so. That'd be a nice finished minute for you. How much? Five hundred. And we'd pay five hundred apiece for the trip. That's all right. Yeah. You're in trouble with some time? No, nothing like that. You said five hundred apiece. How many of you are there? Just myself and another guy. Do you see what you can do for us? I might. 
We'll watch the ship tomorrow morning. Well, look, I'll meet you here tomorrow afternoon. If the answer is yes, I can finish up my business by about 10 o'clock tomorrow night. We'll be ready to go on board at 11. That's an hour before sailing. I don't know anything about sailing, Dan. It's midnight. Five hundred dollars, sir. Let's see what I can do. Thanks a lot. Stark and allowed Roy to leave the cafe. Then he started to rise, but he felt a light touch on his shoulder. The first, Hanson. A girl slipped into the chair beside him. Hanson, you had the wrong man. Oh, I wouldn't if you got rid of that finish on your face. I've been watching you, dear. Yes, sir. I'm Marion Hope. Yes, sir. I just wanted to give you a friendly warning. You're a dog puncher, aren't you? Yes. Uh, stick the dog if you leave the coyotes alone. Coyotes? Roy Chase. He's asking for trouble, and he'll get it. Don't get mixed up with him, or you'll be in trouble, too. I remember that. But I like you, dear. I'd like to see you around for a while. I must make a living. Uh, better ways than playing with fire. Oh, better one. <laughs> Maybe I will, when the right time comes. Just keep away from the <laughs> The mad girl's coat was sable. She hissed carelessly over her shoulders and walked to the end of the long room where she entered the manager's office. So, the sergeant left the cafe. He headed directly for his cabin, and when he opened the door, Shane greeted him affectionately. Hello, Shane. I'm sorry to keep you locked up this way, boy. But you're too well known to be running the streets in the daytime. Now that it's dark, you will have a nice long walk. Come on, Bob. Go to the captain, King. At the word captain, the great dog looked up into his master's face and barked his understanding. <laughs> then he trotted ahead of the sergeant through the back streets of the town until he reached the cabin next door to the marine barracks. <laughs> Good dog. You've learned the way fast. <laughs> this was Captain Hawk's cabin. The captain was in command of the company of marines who had taken over the enforcement of law and order in Skagway. The door opened. Okay. Let's have a talk with you, Captain. Come in, come in. Yeah, fine dog. No better lead than the you, son. I can believe it. Tell us in your mind. You've uh, had a letter from Inspector Conrad of the Northwest Mounted Police. And? The sergeant reached into the pocket of his pocket and pulled out his gold whistle. He handed it to the captain. Very handsome. It's engraved on it. Sergeant Preston. The inspector told me this would be my uh, identification. Right, sit down, Sergeant. Thank you, Captain. He said you might be calling on us for assistance. We'd be glad to help you in any way we can, but there were no details in the letter. That's the case. An investigating the murder of Roger Morton with a shot in the White House two weeks ago, 50,000 gold was stolen from his face. He had only one lead. A man named Roy Chase. You suspect he committed the murder? No, Captain. We suspect that he knows who did it, though. Right after the killing, he'd been missing quite a bit, and he told the bartender that the force would never solve the case. But he was the only one who could do that, and he intended to cash in on what he did. You were held in for questioning? No, he decided to guess it. He hoped that he might lead us to the murderer. Yes. That's it. I followed him down here, and I've been watching him ever since. I believe he's made contact with the killer through some third person, and right now he's just trying to fix this for him to get out of the country. How? And he had it clean tomorrow night. I'm supposed to be arranging the passage. See, and you want us to arrest the killer. And I still don't know who the man is. By this time tomorrow night, I may, and when I do need your help, I'll leave it tight. I came here tonight to settle on the means of contact. Blow this whistle. We'll come running. I will let my men. I may be too far away for the whistle. If I am, I'll use King. The dog? And I say Captain, you head straight to the cabin. <laughs> you what? I told him to do it during the week he's been here. If he shows up without me, just follow him and he'll leave it to me. Good. Here's the whistle. That might come in handy, too. Hey, well, 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 better get back on the job. Good luck, Captain. Thanks, hey, Captain. I've been warned that I may need it. Yes. By whom? Her name is Marion Hope. Oh, the girl who used to sing at the 303. The Lady in Sable. I, uh, I'd like to meet her. I think you probably will. Come on, Captain. <laughs> the following morning, the sergeant paid his visit to the Arctic Queen. That afternoon, he met Roy Chase in the 303. The dark man was nervous. The sergeant noticed that his hand shook a little as he lit a cigarette. Well, Bill, what you make out? Yes, sir. Really? Yes, sir, sir. Fine. Perfect. Thanks a lot. I expected more than six. Oh, that's 500. Well, I, I don't happen to have it on me right now. You know, I was afraid of that. But I will have it. You'd better. 
Skip is doing this for personal favor. Of course. And just to make sure I get paid off, he doesn't take you on board until I say the word. Mm-hmm. I'll take you down to the waterfront. I'll signal the ship. I'll send a boat in for you and your friend. It's all set. As soon as I get my 500. I have to go to Dyer to get it. Dyer? It's only two miles. Oh, hey. You got a dog for me, aren't you? Yes. Well, you could drive me. And you could drive me and my friend back here. How about it? We'll pay you a hundred extra for the trip. You the deal? What do we start? Not until dark. I'll meet you here. Excuse me. Do you have a gun? Yes. Where? My friend will be carrying a lot of money. It'll be a dangerous trip. There's been a lot of holdups. I, uh, we might need an extra gun. You never can tell. <laughs> Continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, have you had the thrill lately of being right there in the ballpark when the leadoff man steps up to the plate? Have you been there to see the star players in person, see the wallop home runs, see the exciting double plays? Well, don't miss the fun another day. Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Walk right through the gate free if you are 12 years or younger and bring mom or dad or another paying adult. Yes, you can get a free baseball ticket. No mailing, no waiting. It's right inside a package of Quaker Pop wheat or Quaker Pop rice or Muffet shredded wheat. Or buy Quaker Pack or 10 and get two free baseball tickets. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Hurry to get your free baseball ticket in the special package of Quaker Puff Wheat or Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. Now to continue. The palace was the largest building in Dyer's three story house. There was a cafe on the first floor with a hotel above. The entrance to the hotel was up a flight of stairs on the outside of the building. The sergeant stopped his team in front of the cafe. Hey, 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 hey. hey man, good time. It's only 8 o'clock. Yes. Well, there's no need to unharness the team. I won't be long. Do wait, Mr. Fay. Where are you going? Upstairs. Okay. Hotel. It's going to take us two hours to get back. It's supposed to be at the warehouse at 11 o'clock. Warehouse? In the hand of that place. Thanks for waiting out there. And... Oh. All right. I won't be long. Sergeant watched Chase climb the stairs to the hotel entrance. Then he unharnessed him. Let's see, see for us, and boy, this is some case. Well, said Chase is asking for trouble. He's going to be waiting for him up there. I'd better go after him. He's still here, boy. Watch the scene. <laughs> the door at the top of the steps opened into a hall. The hall led to the front of the building. There was a small lobby there. A girl dressed in an evening gown was talking to the clerk. She would have been more at home in the prize ring than behind the desk. The girl turned. It was Marion. Her dark eyes flashed as she walked straight toward the sergeant. What are you doing here? I should ask the same question. There'd be nothing wrong with Marion. I've been downstairs and I live here. Oh, what were you doing in Skagway yesterday? But you didn't. I had an appointment with Dan and Smith. He won't sit down here with any music on it. That doesn't matter. After what I told you, you can come over here with Roy Chase. He's very good, Of course. What did he ask for it today? He didn't ask anyone. He nodded to Dad and went down the corridor. Still, he had me to go to his cousin. Anything wrong in there? Is that all? Oh, I'm glad in back. He won't be needed. Get out of here and get out of here fast. He hasn't paid me yet. You know, I'm warning you as a friend. If you're a friend, you should tell me a little more. What sort of troubles are we heading for? He's made the money. Huh? Huh? Like me, I think. Yes, sir. Yes, I have nothing to do with such people, but I keep my eyes and my ears open. A good house, dude. It's a tough country. I agree. Who are such people, now? Mark Hanley, for one. He owns this hotel in the cafe downstairs. Staff who works behind the desk. Go away, too. And the man in 17. Who's the man in 17? None of my business, and it's none of yours. Oh, that seems to have left. Probably going to tell Mark that you're here. Get out of here, boy. I have an investor in Roy, man. Forget it. 
That's not a mega shot. It was. Now do you believe me? I'm going to take a look at him, 17. Oh, I'll see you later. You're asking for it. Hey. The corridor was dark and narrow. There were bedroom doors on either side. The target moved cautiously. There was no sound coming from any of the rooms. No light showing under any door except at the very end of the corridor. Halfway down, the sergeant stopped. He smelled gunpowder. He lit a match. The door at his right was number 17. Quickly, the sergeant blew out the match and tried the door. It was unlocked. He opened the door slowly. The room seemed to be empty. He stepped inside and closed the door. Two more steps and he touched something. He knelt down and struck another match. The man on the floor was Roy Chase. The sergeant fell for a heartbeat. There was not. For the next second, the door burst open and the sergeant leaped to his feet. As the match went out, he recognized Jack. The burly hotel clerk had a blackjack in his right hand. The sergeant ducked the blow and counted with a right. It connected solidly, but Jack only grunted and swung again. The sergeant lashed out with right to left, trying to work his way to the open doorway. He reached it was out in the corridor when he heard steps behind him. Before he could turn, the barrel of a gun hit him behind the ear, and the black tide closed over him. Uh, Roy took himself a good body guy. Yeah. He was bending over Roy when I came in the room. He knows he's dead. I should never have fired that shot. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Roy ever talked to the police, Harry Clark at hand for murder. Can't blame him for being a little quick on the trigger. Yeah, this guy. Had we better take No, no, no. Dog Trump is the only one who can get Harry on board the other team. What about after the boat sailed? I can't get over with Harry. He wants to make sure the dog puncher doesn't talk. He could pay us something extra. Yeah. Once they swayed him, tie the puncher's hands and feet and drag him inside the room. And get Roy out of here. Where? My room for the time being. Come on, hurry it up. The sergeant's first sensation when consciousness began to return was of a pain in his head. <laughs> then he tried to move and he realized there were ricks around his ankles and his hands were tied behind his back. He was lying on the floor. Someone was lifting his head. <laughs> Continue our adventure in just a moment. 
You should have been at the ball game today. I saw three home runs. And guess what? I got one of the home run balls. Fellas and girls, why don't you get a free baseball ticket? It's easy. Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Your free ticket is waiting for you right now inside packages of Quaker Pop wheat, Quaker Pop rice, Muffet shredded wheat, and Quaker Taco Ten, which has two free baseball tickets. Yes, if you are 12 years or younger, just bring mom or dad or another paying adult and see wonderful major or minor league baseball games free. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Get as many free tickets as you want. No mailing, no waiting. When mom buys breakfast cereal, just be sure she gets the kind with a free baseball ticket inside. That's Quaker Pop wheat and rice and Muffet shredded wheat. You get two free baseball tickets inside Quaker Taco 10. So don't miss out another day. See the star players wallop those home runs. Now to continue. Two hours later, the sergeant stopped his team in front of a warehouse on the Skagway in Waterford. Oh, 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 oh. Is this the place? We go through the warehouse, not on the dock. The what, man? No, no. The warehouse is empty. Well, let's make it fast. Yeah, we've got to wait for Marion. Oh, it's you. You and Marion go first, Dick. Just me. Maybe he's in the baby. Okay. Do you mind? Do you know that one of those three prisoners? I don't know about that. Where's the boy alive? Oh, where's the body? Hey, Mark. I thought he carried that in just before I got to see you. I thought it was all. Bear in one of the nose to run any rats around. I told you they're away. Very funny. <laughs> That's a story. You really have to that part, Terry? Yes. Seems to be heavy. Never mind. Where's the ship? You can see the lights out there. How are you going to signal? I don't know. Light it. Yeah. Won't be needed. Bring on the skipper and I agreed on with three long blasts on this whistle. Like this. Hey, let me see that whistle. What for? I want to look at it. Bring the lantern closer, Jack. Give me that whistle. Why not? Hey, it's cool. It's a regulation northwest mounted whistle. And there's a name on it. Sergeant Press. How do you happen to have a mounted whistle? How do you happen to have 50,000 in gold? Huh? Who told you that? I should say 50000 Well, that's what you gave Mark for hiding you up. Oh, so Roy talk. Well, I'm going to put a bullet through you right now. I'm going to make sure it's done. Without me, you'll never get on that ship. Don't shoot. You'll bring the Marines. Unless I miss my guess, the Marines are here. The sergeant spoke. He grabbed the ladder from Gap's hand and brought it down on Terry's head. Terry hit the dock and the door of the warehouse burst open and a squad of Marines poured out. Hey, let's get the man Mark and Gap, completely taken by surprise, turned to meet the Marines. As they raised their guns, the captain fired twice. Good shooting, Captain. You got them both. Get your guns, Terry. Thank you for the first aid. Yes, his name is Harry Cross. Bill knocked him out. He's the man who killed Roger Morton and Whitehorse, Captain. I know at least some of it from that part. <laughs> all right, Jim. All right, fella. I'll say hello to you. Thanks for notifying the captain. You have wonderful dog, Sergeant. He started leading us out of town to a drive. Then he must have picked up your trail heading for the water front. He led us straight here. You heard the whistle? Here is a bell. We were only half a block away. Right away. Where, where is it? Harry had it. <laughs> He has it now. <laughs> Good boy. I wouldn't want to lose that. So the whistle belongs to you. And you're Sergeant Tess. That's the service, ma'am. That means you'll be going back to the Yukon. After these three, I tried for the murder of Roy Chase. What, Sam? Roy Chase was shot in the palace of Bay tonight. The case is yours now, Captain. And with Marion's testimony, you shouldn't have any trouble in getting a conviction. Boy knew that Harry had robbed and murdered Roger Morton. He had a blackmail, Harry, and got part of the gold. Harry agreed to pay him if he'd arrange for him to get out of Skagway. Roy tried to do that through me. When the arrangements were made, Roy was eliminated. We would have done too if you hadn't shown up when you did, Captain. Sergeant. Huh? Since you're going back to the Yukon, wouldn't it be a good idea to introduce me to the Captain? In case I need protection in the future. Oh, well, sorry. Captain Hawk, there's hope. How do you do? I like men who say it every day. It's a uh, marine regulation, I thought. I think the Marines have a lot of good ideas. Yeah. I'd better take you to headquarters and get you something hot to drink. Thank you. Uh, about the body, Captain. Don't you worry, Sergeant. I'll see that it's brought here to Dawson. We'll rush the trial so you can get back to Utah fast. Uh, shall we go, Miss Hope? Yes. 
Just a moment for the word about our next exciting adventure. Here's a mutual note for you. Mutual is a network that has programs you can enjoy throughout the week. If you like question and answer fun, then you'll find there are all sorts of quiz programs you can listen to on Mutual. You can try and outguess the contestants and see if you know the right answer before they do. Even if you don't know, it's loads of fun listening to others. And you can learn a lot at the same time, too. And some of you boys and girls probably have favorite songs and favorite singers that you like to listen to. When you tune into Mutual, you'll hear many of the stars you like best, singing and playing the kind of music you enjoy most. Don't forget, too, there are programs of outdoor adventure and others of barn dance music and jamboree. There's plenty of good listening waiting for you on your Mutual dial. Tune in every weekday afternoon for Mutual's famous programs, especially designed for adventure lovers. And remember to listen other times as well for different kinds of programs you like over most of these stations. And now, in the private office of a crooked mine broker named Cass Hinkley, a man named Flint Parker is speaking. Hinkley, how would you like to get in on the ground floor of a new gold track? <laughs> I'd like that real well, Parker. Real well. As the witty. All right, here's the door. A young mining engineer named Joe Dryden has made a valuable strike somewhere in the mountains. He brought back ore samples to prove it. He's drawn a map showing the location of the truck. He's talking. He's staying at the Victoria Hotel. The men can break into his room the night they can get a hold of that map. <laughs> They'll do it, all right. That map will be in my hands before morning. Yes, a valuable gold map is at stake. And thieves are out to get possession of it. When Sergeant Preston enters the picture, he'll be facing plenty of trouble and possible death at the hands of ruthless gunmen. Don't miss this next exciting adventure. These charge and question of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. <laughs> This is Jay Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.